How's it going guys? It's been about uh, four years since I posted the last video, chilling at the new place. So I uh, just wanted to give you a little bit of an update on what's happening and tell you what the story is. I've written up a little bit of a script, so I'm not using half as much filler words. Uh, going like mm, uh, mm, and uh, just go more straight to the point. Things were rough back then, but things have got better now. So I'm fairly back on track. Everything is cool about the PC crapped the bed and the hard drive went, uh, followed by the Wi-Fi card, and I left it not fixed for a while now. Um, bear that in mind, I built the PC myself from scratch since 2011, so it was doing really well up to that point. I do have a laptop, 128GB hard drive was no use to me anyways, so I have the PC sorted now. So um, I basically just um, rebuilt it up a bit, uh, stuck a brand new hard drive on, in the kitchen in the house there. So. Um, should be ready to go. I do I do have an iPhone. Uh, I had the old SE for about seven years and counting. Um, I got uh, a new f uh, iPhone 14, but for some reason I have issues uh, transferring files. It just keeps disconnecting or it just won't show up the files, which is a pain in the ass. Um, and that, that applies to both uh, computers. You know, I had the both laptop and PC. Uh, I, I'm getting a standard camera for the case of transferring files. I'm going to freestyle a bit. Um, I the, the camera I'm using right now is a Sony HX90. Uh, I was going to get a Canon G7X. Uh, the reader are just overpriced, or people are just aren't replying uh, messages. I was looking to get a second-hand one, not buying 600 quid at a retail price. So the Sony HX90, there is like a HX80 or something like that. They probably retail around 400 quid. I bought this second-hand nearly new for like 150 quid so that's that's very handy like so yeah so this should do the job hopefully now if the pictures are clear you know give me a shout so yeah we'll see how this goes right so the start of the story since let's start around 2019 when everything's gone to the dogs I have never found my cars I've lost I've searched around in the place um, in the quiet with no joy they were either stolen or lifted or whatever so my projects are gone forever um, that last garage in Bornicula is history now shit happens I give up what I do have is still got me tools <laughs> I got hold of a rented garage in Boyle but I never got to use it so I packed that up and now I just finally got a place uh, a couple of years back um, I have a very good friend, a very good valuable friend that owns the sheds but um, I'll get to that later um, so yeah the chapter wasn't meant to be <laughs> wasn't meant to be so anyways uh, I was in a long term relationship it was around I don't know four or five years nearly five years um, lost count so the girlfriend told my ass and shortly found somebody else after that uh, she didn't want it and off she went that was the end of that so it is what it is you know it's not meant to be um, so I went straight to the market, uh, no joy, a lot of flakers, you know yourself, you know, just a load of waste of time and all that shit. Um, it can be hair pulling and very frustrating. Um, fell into the manosphere, you know, I end up uh, look, looking up on, on how to get one, I know that's sad. But uh, after doing a bit of research, I, I just grew more and more apart on this, the way everything was going. So uh, I decided to to stay to stay single for good after that. So, so while I was forced out in the market, yeah, um, I've been single for years. I don't even care anymore. I'm good. Um, I know I'm ugly and short and unattractive. I've hated everything about myself. I still do. I never felt so shit in my life after after I stopped caring. I'm a bit happier now. Um, without any woman there bringing problems to the table, uh, men and women don't need each other at the end of the day. So. I'm good, you know, um, I, I'm not stressing out and panicking and looking, 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 looking. I have I have given up about a couple of years now, so. And still no takers whatsoever, not a, not a fucking, <laughs> not, not a dicky bird anyways. So, uh, yeah, off to the next point now. Um, I'm going to have to read all this so I could be uh, breaking and stopping and stuff. It's a lot to say. After disastrous 2019... I thought 2020 would be my year. Oh hell no, COVID landed and closed the whole place down. That means shops and motor factors closed down. 
and I can't get my stuff and I'm sure people have a lot worse time than me. At least I was still working on my jobs as an essential. Uh, we all know what happened anyways with that year of that pandemic. Later on, I fell out with my friends in summer 2020. I've lost a lot of friends. It was absolutely sickening and it was really depressing and lost a lot of people. That meant the world to me as well as uh, all the other friends I built up turned against me. Uh, I even lost a best friend as well. He was pretty much uh, a long term brother to me. Uh, I had to let him go as well. Um, all turned against me and I can't really, rem I can't really remember um, what over exactly but it involved some women between me and my, my mates uh, that caused the scene. They did like me, they hated the fucking side of me, created traps that I fell into and made me a bad guy uh, waiting for me to F up. So no, I wasn't flirting with any of them whatsoever. Uh, I just see through their bullshit and hell broke loose and blown up on me. And I know whose side they were on when that happens. Uh, a lot of bitches I don't know from Adam that jumped into the bandwagon. Shout, uh, shouting, small dick syndrome, avoid that guy like a plague. As if I'm an ogre or something. Now there's one thing I was sorry about. I used to have a mate that was working on the car. Uh, he had a slip, uh, he had a slip of the grinder uh, on the hand. And I posted a story about... Uh, this is how you use a grinder as a joke uh, that didn't sit well and I apologise and but that was a waste of time but do you know what screw that guy he has no control of his anger as anyways I found a lot of them never liked me at the first place but all that over this stupid shit I have uh, recovered since then but never gone back friends with them since I did bump into them the odd time and we'd be both saying well what's the crack but uh, that was it and walked on. Um, I've left with more real ones, so it could be worse. My daily Passat B6 wagon. Oh boy, I'm going to have to read this one. Uh, it develops just a flywheel rattle. And I literally have no time to fix it, um, as I'm constantly working 24-7. I don't know any garages as I fix cars myself. So I looked up forums, found a recommended one, then driven into one, and a week has passed and he fucked up my car's entire gearbox and then I got it out undrivable and tried a dealer just to look at it and they said it was completely just destroyed then the boss uh, the, the boss asked me uh, where's the car gone and then he strongly suggested I bring it to this gobshite's garage I said no thanks and he strongly suggested I do so I gave in and that mechanic is a piece of shit but he took it on and then the car left in bits and dragged it on and on and on and on and on and I fought to get my car back even tried to get a solicitor and more solicitors but they were useless so it took three years and three grand to get the car pulled out so I sorted out the car and I sold it uh, to a friend of mine that I have the shed with for two and a half grand and I had to buy a car in a hurry because I needed a car to get to work so I have um, a 20, 2016 Passat uh, very low mileage, um, no mileage. It's like under 10,000 uh, kilometers on a clock. It was costed 16 grand, so it, it was, um, it's, it's, it's like new, but uh, yeah, it was a bit of a rush buy, but it was a very good car. Since uh, Crash was gone out of the picture in uh, 2016 and closed up, the Crash did come back for a couple of days and closed through COVID 2020, then summer 22. And I joined MMA class, it's better than karate. It's called Nafina in Athlone. But since I left karate in 2016, I've lost all physique. Uh, I ended up full lethargic. I can't lift as good as I used to be. I've let myself go. And that truck job wasn't helping either. And eating all delis and crap. So I've gone downhill since I've gone skin and bone now. Uh, it's embarrassing to be honest. It's great to be back up in the fighting club. But uh, I do have weights in my room, but uh, <laughs> I've never really touched them. So it's a matter of time I, I should start doing them. Right, uh, let's talk about jobs. Uh, I'm really going to have to read through this one. It's a long story. Um, the lorry job I had, I packed it up. It was a load of crap. I literally have no life when it comes to that. Uh, gave me a bad taste in my mouth after trucking. Uh, I was re willing to train up for free. Then after a while, when I got paid peanuts, doing 16 hours a day, which is way beyond the legal limits. Jeez, I'd be fucking arrested. <laughs> 
there should be four uh, there should be four uh, and, and a half hour and 45 minutes break yeah and overloading uh, lots of mechanical problems oh yeah overloading and live mechanical problems and going in and out of tight farm gates is a long story I don't even want to talk about this pure crap uh, then one day regular customer which happens to be my current boss <laughs> He came in one day and he said, Jesus Ben, I haven't seen you in ages, what happened? And I, I told him the, the story, I had my days cut and filling station and doing trucking and shit. And he said, right, I have a job for you. And then he set me up with uh, his side van job courier, which is called MedLab. And it's going from hospital to hospital, laboratory, laboratory stuff. Um, Theatre and medical supplies start from Sligo, then Roscommon, but then Balneslow, then in many areas in, in Galway City, and then sometimes I go to Dublin, but most of the time I head back to Roscommon from Galway. Then fast forward that, the company has been numbered and got taken over by a company called Eurofins, and that's who I'm currently working with now. Uh, Eurofins used to be a rival company to Medlab. So now I'm in working for Eurofins, but I've lost the Sligo run and I haven't done Dublin ever since. Maybe once, but never since after that. Uh, so now ended up with uh, very handy hours. I uh, got the bus, got the bus job by the boss, thrown in at the same time. Um, not anymore, anyways. I'll tell you that in a minute. Uh, the boss, the boss I have. Well, there's more hate than love relationship. Uh, we started best pals with him and. He was a regular customer at the filling station, so uh, to him bringing me to a job and he also shows the bad side about him, yes, he's very short tempered. Uh, I know I'm a slow learner, but he expects me to know everything, uh, know everything already, uh, or become mind reader and have everything done perfectly right off the bat and he loses shit over anything. Fuck's sake man. He's also tight with money too. And also, I didn't find, I didn't find him... Also, didn't I find him in the house, going through the fucking kitchen cupboards? Um, like, what in the name of fuck is he doing in there? And he wanted to slip money into the cupboards and all that. Um, and another time, he was, I was in the ensuite in my bedroom, right? <laughs> and I come in and I find him peeking in, in, in my bedroom window with two hands over his head. Uh, his, uh, I, I can use two hands or something like that. <laughs> hands over his head, uh, peeking in the fucking window, like, he said, come out, come out, come out, and he had a cheek there giving out to me, complaining about some stupid bitch up in the Roscommon Labs, saying my, uh, the, the, my exhaust on the bike was too loud last night, when, when I was uh, doing blood runs for this guy, he was a fucking creep, man, like, he, want, he wanted the keys out of the bus, you know, I was away, like, uh, and... I was away in the van there, van driving job, and he got in the house, he, he got the house owner to access my room for the key for the bus. I, I Well, I've left the key uh, in the bedroom and not left out in the bus, but look, you know, every day is a school day, isn't it? Um, there's nothing sacred, like, right? He wouldn't. He wouldn't give me any bonuses. No holidays. No pay. He wants. He wants to pay for my damaged door, which oh yeah, I had a damaged door in the 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 newer Passat that I have, and uh, there was a bit of a bang on the left hand side of the door. Still, still have the damage there. So instead of paying me fucking holiday money, <laughs> um, or he'd he'd give me oh yeah sure for a fucking Christmas bonus he'd give me a shower gel for Christmas with a with a note to say you can use this to wash your balls with. <laughs> um. I wasn't sure whether to laugh or not. Uh, it's, it's kind of funny, but also a kick in the teeth at the same time. Or he'd be giving out to me changing the tires on the van because they're bald. You know, I I just took the initiative because the tires aren't fit for fucking purpose. I just decided to get the tires changed and pass on, pass on the bill to him. Um, yeah, he'd fly off the handle because I changed uh, tires without his permission. Uh, he's just a middleman. He also he uh, also his buses are always fucking breaking down. One of them overheated. The other one needed tires. The other one burst fucking tires. The other one had a clutch failure. There was like um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, center bearing uh, failure or something like that. Um, couldn't take it off gear. That's that's while carrying school kids. Yeah, his buses drive like a bucket of bolts. 
and I think he may have lost the bus contract at that time um, as me and his other drivers were out of a bus shop and now yeah I'll, I'll actually I didn't put that in I'll explain that um, when the when the bus when the bus time um, start um, when it was time to um, do do a bus run, you know, when it's near Septemberish or end of August or something like that, I I was ringing him and asking him, okay, yeah, uh, what what do we back on? He says, uh, I I don't know, I haven't a clue, I haven't heard anything from anybody, not a dicky bird. I'm like, uh, okay, and then September began. After that, I, I rang. Um, is 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 there? I mean, the school is coming back now. Uh, when when am I back on? What's what time in the morning? I didn't hear anything or not not a thing. And even fucking uh, someone's parents uh, were ringing me, asking me, uh, am, "Am I back on the school run?" I said, "I have no, I have no idea. I, I was, you know, talked to the boss, but I have no idea." And I w went back to him. He said, "Look, just tell him um, we we don't know when we're back as of now." I was like, "Okay." So um, turn turned out he lost his contract, and some other bus firm uh, got that run. So, for fuck's sake, man. Uh, so where am I now? Um, lost bus track. Uh, as me and other drivers went out of the bus shop. Now he did come back after a while. With oh yeah, he did come back to me after uh, after that following year or something like that. With with paper for me to set up a new bus contract. Uh, he's got one for Galway uh, Galway Division. Uh, but I turned it down. It's not worth my while. I I know the pay will be shit for the sake of getting up for a. At a stupid hour in the morning, in in the morning for an hour, for an hour and a half, just screw that. I mean, money again, fucking hundreds at the end of the week or something. It's not worth me while, you know. Not worth me while fucking waking up to that to that morning. So that's that boss, anyways. <laughs> His bus uh, was parked at my place for more than several months before he uh, decided to move it. <laughs> I had it there that long, like it's fucking crazy, like. No, oh, um, I haven't written that far now, so. Back to freestyling. <laughs> so another thing was, um, I think near the the end of twenty one or something, um, I fell out with my parents, <laughs> and um, I I moved out. So um, it's a it's a long story, anyways. But uh, up to that point, uh, when when my dad just loses his temper and I got fed up with him at, at the end of the day. Uh, one random day there, I've. Um, banged my head at the end of the, the attic door so the attic door of the house that was left open like that right it was kind of you know at a certain level and it was tight against where the the bathroom area is so there's only a little gap in between and um, some somehow I, I banged my head at the the edge of the, the attic door that was open and at the pain of the moment um, I, I went to the bathroom there. I end up just uh, slam slam the door, you know, just just how just out and pain the anger and stuff like that. <laughs> and my dad was shouting, "Ah, this boy a river, fuck it!" And I was in there. I was like, "What the name of fuck is wrong with him?" I I came I, I came back out and he was like, "This boy fucking my fucking rules and all that stuff." I I said, Do "You know what? Shove your house up your fucking hole. I'm out of here." That kind of thing. And uh, that was that was it. I was serious. I just I, I I checked out. I was moving out. I was sick of his fucking shit. He can keep his fucking house. I don't give a fuck. So I was out out of there. Anyways, um, I that was cutting <laughs> uh, the story uh, really short right there. I uh, won't go into any detail. So I've uh, I've looked around rent a place. And I moved into Boyle. It was it was an apartment, so it was kind of a, an upstairs apartment. Um, it was actually a nice, sweet little place. Like it was it was like uh, five fifty a month, but it was only a one bedroom. There was a separate kitchen, separate bathroom, a big sitting room, and all that stuff. You know, it's like 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 it is like an old place, but it was kind of modernly done up. You know, looked looked kind of fresh. Anyways, you know, it's nice and clean and stuff. Um, so I moved there anyways. And obviously, I had all had me cars and all me stuff there at the parents' place, anyways. Uh, and yeah, so that that friend of mine, I I went on to him there because he did offer he did offer me a uh, loan of his sheds and all that stuff. And I said, no, no, I'm good, I'm good, yeah, I'm good. But one day, I I I changed my mind. I said, uh, well, uh, I I'm in a spot of bother here, and uh, straight straight away. 
he, he, he let me he let me have a shit. Just straight away he said, just just move your stuff over. I can't remember what he said, but uh, he, he was very helpful, you know. So um, the sheds there are in, in Craig's. Uh, that's, that's where my mate lives. And he has farm sheds. It's actually farm sheds now, not just ordinary shed and, and all that stuff. Um, he he used to be a farmer. He he run he he runs a, a big farm and all that stuff. And he decided to pack it up, and he no longer has use of of his sheds. So he said, "Look, the the sheds are there. You know, there's there's no use of them. It, it may as well be used." So yeah, fair play to him, anyways. So um, another thing was um, even after moving the entire stuff into Craig's, you know, ah, fair play to him. Um, the the boss man keeps fucking ringing me and ringing me and ringing me. Because he wanted me to move into Ross Common Town, where I am handy, um, to do the uh, taxi blood runs as well as the school bus runs. Uh, in order to, to do the job, you see, I need to be maybe within minutes away from from uh, where I start my job. Like that's fair enough. But I was only I was only just moving into Boyle. I was probably maybe two months in or something, and that's when he wanted me to move into uh, town and stuff. I, I didn't want to, I wasn't interested whatsoever, and he keeps talking me into it, and talking me into it, and talking me into it, and all these fancy figures, and all that kind of crap. So, um, this place I'm currently in now, I, I eventually, I gave in, I moved, I've moved out of Boyle, and moved into Roscommon Town. Now, here's the thing. So, this is a room only, but it's a shared house. And this, and this rented uh, room now is costing 320 quid a month, a hell of a lot cheaper than what I'm paying in Boyle for 550. So that's a that's a huge um, price drop altogether. And I'm minutes away from from start my work. You know, hospital is only like four minutes from here or something, which is very handy. Okay, fair enough. But um, I wish the hell he would have um, suggested that before I even moved there because I did I did keep him up to date on what happened. You know, I said, look, I'm moving out of my house, uh, parent house. I'm I'm moving into my rent house and all that stuff. And obviously that was fine. And then later on, he he wants me to move. He expected me to move straight out and into Ross Common Town. That I wasn't happy one bit, like you know, because I was settling really nice in Boyle, and I got on w with the locals really well. You know, me and them get on like house and fire. You know, I I I love talking to them. I, I go out and see everybody, go to the pubs, whatever. I don't drink. I don't drink alcohol whatsoever. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. I just go in. Get a glass of coke, sitting and chilling, and and these guys beside me talking shy with me. I talk shy back with them. Great crack altogether. I go to local shops, getting to know all these people. It was great. I bonded with everybody. Now, had to move straight out, which is a real pain in the neck. So it is. So um, that's what happened anyway. So I moved straight out of Boyle into Ross Common Town. It's a lovely wee house. I should um, I should show you this place um, whenever. Anyways. Um, so obviously I had to look to the room like I I didn't have any intention of of moving into this house at all, uh, into moving out at all you know away from Boyle because I wanted to stay there. Um, yeah, your your man was probably a bit sheepish at the start, but uh, him and I we get on great now. We had good cracks, sending funny messages, our videos, and all that crap. It's great crack. So no, he he was all, he's all right, you know. And then we have um, uh, a roommate and all that stuff. Uh, young fella there is a carpenter too and he sounds a bell as well you know I, I hardly see I hardly see them two guys at all I usually have the whole house to myself which is great so yeah it's a, it's a nice spot now it's um, I'm living in uh, Golf Links Road in Roscommon Town so it's a really nice spot and um, I suppose it does make economical sense as well so it is what it is isn't it so uh, another thing was uh, one day my dad had a stroke and my mum uh, went on to me and uh, told me to go see them and see them and stuff like that. I gave in and started seeing them and stuff. Um, my dad didn't take it very well anyways. Um, he had a, an, an awful stroke. So his face was falling on one side, his his right, uh, his his limbs anyways, his uh, one, one of his arms and one of his legs, he lost the use of them altogether. He has no use whatsoever, so he's completely disabled. Um, we had to heave him off off the bed, onto the wheelchair, onto the um, uh, in, into the sitting room there, the armchair or 
we have to, we have to have a bed there anyways, you know, so we can watch the TV. He even went to into the toilet, back to bed or whatever, and even with the toilet problems and stuff, it's it's, it's not pleasant whatsoever. So there's a lot of lifting and heaving and carrying and all that stuff. Um, but fast forward there, uh, me and my parents, yeah, we're we're getting on really good. I'm probably better than ever. Ever since I moved out, we're like fucking best friends now. I know. Um, we lived happily ever after now. <laughs> But except, you know, when he has he has a stroke, it's it's not easy. So had to get all this um, what do you call it, medical equipment stuff, you know, like the the hoist and all that stuff, um, all the assists and all that stuff. Um, we had an awful job getting a carer for him. Um, I my mother be ringing around carers and all that stuff, and they're not even asked to come down and, and, and to see them or help them out or anything like that. I mean, they're, they're lucky to get a once a month or once every fuck two or three months or something, which is a pure piss take. They're supposed to be going down every week at least anyways, or, or at least minimum of a few hours. No, that still hasn't happened. I don't know how they get away with it. I really don't know. But anyways, you know, like, I suppose he has toilet problems and all that stuff and I have to be carrying them on from the from the bed that's in the, the, the sitting room into the wheelchair and back to bed or into the toilet, up the toilet, back into bed, back forth, back forth. It's very hard my mother. She has, she has to do everything herself. And obviously they'd be pointing out that, you know, uh, she, has, she, has, she has a hard problem and she has to do everything herself and all that stuff. And do I want to be moving back to him? No. Do I help? But, um, I'm not moving back to him anyways, but I it's it's very hard. My mother, it's not fair on her. She has to take all that waste, and plus, she was uh, she be breeding dogs herself. Well, she used to be breeding dogs, but she's kind of going out of business now. So mostly she's doing dog grooming. She's getting um, problems with her shoulders. You know, both of them have health problems anyways. And but my dad now he he fared out he fared out really worse, but. Um, he has a stroke for a long time now. It's either several months, maybe nearly a year. I don't know. Um, he has it for a little while now. Still hasn't got use of his legs or his arm or not like that. And still has to be carried around the place. So it wasn't easy at all. Now, um, I do I do make um, visits every weekend now. I, I, I go over to the house. I, I sleep over on the weekend. And then I go, um, go back to work the, the next day after that. So... That's my kind of routine now. I just go to my parents every weekend and sleep over and stuff. Um, and then I, I'm, I'm here uh, throughout the whole week as well. Or I, I'd probably go over to, to uh, my, my mate's place with the sheds that are working my cars and stuff. So, yeah, that's, that's about it. So Now to the interesting part. The, the more interesting bits. So my daily car is a Volkswagen Passat. It's um, a uh, 2016, 162, <laughs> and it's a poverty spec car. It's one of these trend lines, 1.6 TDI, run-of-the-mill car. But she's a, she's a fine machine, like. And the other vehicle now, I have a Volkswagen Caddy, and it's a Caddy Maxi Life. It's one of these seven-seater pasture private car, uh, long wheelbase van which I wanted to use that as a, a quick run around, you know, just to maybe collect engines and tools and parts and all sorts of crap like that. Uh, a vehicle I'm not too worried about because I was going to get um, a commercial panel van and the, the commercial insurance is too, too overpriced. They're like five or 6,000 that they're looking for, for uh, just a, a wee panel van. So I decided to, to get a private car instead. So I got me uh, insurance for 700 odd quid on, on private car insurance. The only problem is I've used the same no claims bonus as I did on my daily car. So uh, they invalidated my insurance because they wanted proof of no claims and all that stuff. And it only works in one car. Yes, rip off Ireland for you. There you go. So um, despite of having tax and NCT tested, it's mostly off the road. The odd time might chance me arm going without insurance but I really shouldn't so I couldn't get to use it that much and I ended up just using my car instead. Now I have other cars. I have a Lexus IS220D. I have a um, Volkswagen Passat uh, B5 which is a 2004 1.9 TDI. Um, it was 
I actually I won that um, as as a raffle, fifteen euro ticket, and uh, yeah, I won that car. So the car came with a blown engine. That's fine, can't complain. That's that's still a prize to me. So I got a, a one thirty brake engine, and I shoved it into that one, and worked really well. Actually, I have two one thirty brake engines. I wanted to put the first one in it. I thought, yeah, this engine's too good for this car. You know, it, it rips, absolutely rips. So I got another 130 brake engine in it. Low mileage, 120k miles in it. While the car itself was about, what is it, three, three, 300 odd thousand um, mile, in miles anyways. I can't remember, but there was a lot of mileage in the car. So um, as, as, as you've seen, I, I've worked in that car. Uh, what else do I have? Oh yeah. I've um, <clears throat> how do I pronounce this? I've an Ivico daily van. It's it's a big rust bucket of a yellow van. <laughs> I bought that for seven hundred fifty quid. Just I don't know for the crack. So I decided to use that probably as a as parts half a tool shed, half a camper van or something like that. Um, I haven't done anything to it yet, but uh, I'll probably do something later on. Maybe spray graffiti on her, make it look cool or whatever. Uh, it runs perfect. First turn the key starts, and uh, I'm surprised with how powerful it is. Uh, I think they're supposed to be slow, but that thing just goes from under you. <laughs> uh, bloody great machine, so that's why I bought that. Like it's it's a very good van. Uh, what else do I have? So I got I have three drift car projects now. So I got a, a Mazda RX-8. Yes, I got another one. I got a black Mazda RX-8. I got a BMW 318. 318 CI, <laughs> which is uh, the coupe, it's an E46 model, and I got a uh, Nissan 350Z as well. So I have three of the finest cars, and uh, so at the moment uh, I'm, I'm stripping them down. Um, I'm currently just stripped down the 350Z and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm yet to get engines and gearbox for them and all that, but so far. With the RXA, right? I have I got the OM six oh six, which is off a of Mercedes. It's a three liter diesel. It's uh, one of these uh, diesel version of a two JZ engines. I don't have to open the engine. I could just slap a big turbo, and I get uh, a lot of boost out of it. And I also have a mechanical pump for that engine as well. So it's going to be it's going to be a rapid ripper. Um, I plan on putting a one UZ or a three more, probably preferably a three UZ for the three fifty Z. I have a I see a three three UZ. But uh, that engine has snap belts, so I don't know if it's a good idea to go for that or not and rebuilding it, but it's either that or a tick rod 1UZ or something. And for the 3 Series E46 Coupe, it's a lovely car. Oh, gee, that's a nice car. It's it's kind of one of these dark blue colours with cream leather interiors. Oh, it's lovely. Also came with no engine and all that. It was like They're all parts, parts cars. Um... I was planning on to go for a 2JZ, but that, that's that's like um, finding a needle in a haystack, really. Um, I'd probably go for an M57, probably 3 year diesel or something like that. Might have two diesels and one petrol, maybe, preferably in a V8, nice rumbly V8 or something. But uh, I'll see what happens anyways, haven't, haven't gotten till I got them. But so far, I have the Mercedes OM606 going into... The Mazda RX-8 and I think it'll work really well. It might be nose heavy but if I push it far back enough it should balance out okay I suppose. Uh, so that's the cars I have. Um, I have a motorbike. I have uh, a Honda Horn at 600. It's a, it's a 99. Um, it's like a, a really good starter bike. Uh, it cost me 500 odd quid on the insurance to start off uh, from scratch. Uh, I leave I leave the insurance running on anyways, you know, just to build up the low, no claims and stuff. Um, I parted up in in the shed there after passing the um, driving test, so I have me complete full license now. I have me 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 trucks, which is the rigid and the Arctic. Um, I have me bus license, which is done by the, the coach, nice big Van Hul Van Hul bus, um, a big coach, and obviously I have the car. Includes the bike, uh, includes the tractor and all that shit, and includes the trailers, everything like that. And then I, I finally got went on to uh, got, get me full bike license as well. So my license is fully filled after that. 
So it's been it's parked up in the shed there hibernating at the moment, but I'm gonna plan on taking it out on the end of this month, which is uh this is February by by the way, that I'm recording, so I don't know when I'll be posting this up. Uh was it third or second of Feb? Yeah, third third of Feb, so and um uh, I, I could post this probably in a while anyways. And it's a bloody great bike. No, absolute ripper, sounds good. It is a bare bones bike, you know. I, I prefer a good fared bike, you know, like a CBR or something like that, you know, a nice fire blade or whatever, but probably get it one day or something like that. But it's a great starter bike. It cost me uh seventeen hundred to buy that bike. It's it's a very good price, very good, valuable price. She she already has a lot of battle scars in it, you know, big dent in a tank, a lot of curb rashes, a lot of accidents and breakages and all sorts, but it's fully functional. It never gave me a, a never gave me a day's problem, except um, it supposedly had a, a brand new battery in it, and that battery shit the bed. It wouldn't hold its charge, but I changed that up. There is a bit of um, wearing mess on it, but it's just I can I can clean that up and rewire it up a bit or something like that. Uh, it needs a good tidying up, really. Maybe some conversions, and I did bits maybe LED tail lights and all that stuff. It looks really good. Um, yeah, I'll show you the bike there one of the days. I'll show you all my vehicles one of the days. Um, what are what other vehicles do I have? So I have the the, the Ivico Daily. I have the, the Caddy. I have the the two Passats. I have the the Lexus. I have the the three drift cars. Uh, what else? I I think that's everything at the that I can cover at the moment. So, yeah.